Hello, I'm Edgar Kramer from Soundstage Australia. Today I'm here to talk to you about the JBL Studio Monitor 4349. It's kind of a strange coincidence, but out of the dozens of loudspeakers I reviewed over a long period of time, I somehow never got around to reviewing a JBL speaker. So this is my first JBL review, and um, so far, uh, without giving too much away, it's an impressive design. So I guess what uh, JBL is trying to do with the 4349 is converge the pro studio world with the audiophile world. And I think it's only a natural thing anyway, because the studio engineer is looking for accuracy and he's looking for faithfulness to the artist's intent and to the feed they get from the, from the microphone through the mixer. And at home, an audiophile is, is also looking for accuracy in terms of what the speaker is providing uh, in faith to the source material. So really the two spaces uh, aiming at a pretty much the same thing. Uh, now, the speaker needs to have a certain musical involvement, otherwise an audio audiophile will probably won't fall in love with it. But I think the JBL is renowned for that sort of thing. So the 4349 is a two-way design using a one and a half inch dual diaphragm compression driver and a 12 inch paper pulp uh, bass driver. So it's a simple two-way in a typical JBL layout, which horn loads the tweeter with a specific uh, designed to the horn flare. Both drivers are mounted on the uh, JBL iconic blue baffle. Uh, so we all know that from the studio monitors of years past and from some iconic uh, loudspeaker designs of the past. Now, the th one thing I found with the 4349 is by placing them approximately in the locations where my speakers are usually located, whenever I review a floor standing speaker, um, the sound was quite thin in the lower mid-range and upper bass. I found I had to experiment quite a bit with uh, speaker positioning. What I did find, which was amazing, is that once I found a, a position where the speaker was actually uh, fairly close to the front wall, everything gelled. The uh, mid-range opened up. Uh, there was a, a, an enhanced sense of body through the mid-range. The tweeter was still uh, smooth and detailed. The bass was tight and controlled. There was great dynamics. The whole, basically the whole speaker changed character. Between the uh, tweeter and the uh, bass driver, there's a very thin panel. And on that panel, you'll find two trim pots, one for high frequency and one for ultra high frequency. The trim pots are adjustable in half dB increments and they go to plus or minus one dB. Now I found that in my room, Leaving them at the neutral position gave me the, the right kind of uh, sound balance that I'm looking for. Um, but the great thing about that, des that design aspect is that you can more or less tailor the 4349 to your room acoustics. So if you've got a, a dead sounding room, you can increase uh, both trim pots up half a dB or one dB. And if you've got a very live sounding room, you can go the other way. For some reason, uh, I'm on a phase at the moment or a, or, a, or, a, or a stage where I'm really getting into stoner rock. Um, bands like uh, Color Haze and Low Rider. And I found that these speakers love that sort of thing. So play them loud. They play rock really well. They're involving their dynamic basses is, is really powerful. But they're not a one-trick pony. I've also been listening to a lot of classical music, a lot of jazz combos and um, trios, duos. And they do that very, very well indeed. The 4349 is uh, it's a fairly large speaker, but it's not a, a tall floor stander. So the Australian distributor, Convoy International, offers a bespoke stand, which places the speaker about six or seven inches off the ground, and it angles it or tilts it backwards a little bit so that the speaker or the tweeter is aimed at the listening height. And that uh, makes a big difference. Uh, it, it, it actually coalesces the, uh, the sound output of the drivers, so it becomes a much more coherent speaker. So I highly recommend that you investigate uh, speaker stands, um, and why not look at the uh, stand that Convoy International is offering, because that is a very good match for the speaker uh, topology. The 4349 is a reasonably efficient design, uh, obviously something to do with the tweeter flare, but um, it's a 91 dB uh, sensitivity, so um, most amplifiers will work well. I didn't get a chance to try them with a valve amplifier, 
but I found that my solar state amplifier did a great job. So what I recommend is not necessarily lots of power, but uh, high, car high current designs are important and uh, an amplifier with good damping factor that will control a 12 inch driver. And as I found, bass was, you know, powerful and deep. So um, although I didn't, like I said, I didn't try a valve amplifier, I think good solid state um, designs will work really well with a 4349. So that's the JBL 4349. Um, that's a quick uh, preview for you in uh, preparation for the full review to come out in a few weeks time. So look out for the review. I'll be talking about all the features, the drivers more in depth, um, also the design philosophies and um, my impressions with all sorts of music.